since I uh, had this project. Mm -hmm. I uh, just started doing pastels this year. Wow. Yeah, and uh, um, the paper mosaics, that's a new, a new thing since I went to Mexico. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is all paper? Yeah, it's all paper and CDs. <laughs> When I was in Mexico, the original um, mosaics, they were made with tile, broken tile, and uh, mirrors. And so when I came home, I was trying to think of what I could use. And uh, they're all the, the uh, paper is all cut up old watercolors. Yeah. Because I used to like, do the figure two or three times a week when I lived in the city. So they're all old paintings cut up. And then I thought, what can I use instead of mirrors? And, uh, and I thought, CDs, that'll do it. <laughs> and uh, so that's a new thing for me. And uh, what else? I just started doing you know, a lot of different things. The, uh, that photo collage up there, I, I used to do a lot of photo collages. The uh, already of what we have at the top. Oh, yeah. And that's a, a collage of photos that I took on this trip to Mexico in, uh, in the surrealist sculpture garden. So it's all my photos. But it's an old-fashioned uh, collage. It's not a digital collage. You know, I didn't do it on the computer. I did it with uh, an exacto knife and rubber cement. It's the old style. When my husband was traveling in Asia, I used to make uh, Naughty little collages and mail them to them, general delivery. So he'd like, <laughs> he'd like go to like Don Pasar in uh, Indonesia and go to the post office and get mail delivery and then get a lot of collages for it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, so I, I've always really enjoyed doing collages like that of, uh, of photographs. But I think that's the first time I've done one with all photos that I shot myself. Mm -hmm. I shot 1,200 photos on my trip to Mexico. Oh. <laughs> oh. Easy to do these days. Yeah, it's really been nice because of the pandemic, you know, the quarantine. I not had to worry about what I was going to do. I had this project, you know. Yeah. So tell us a little bit more about this quilt over here, Susan. Well, what would you like to know about it? Um, uh, has, what is has uh, nine photographs in it that are printed with our archival uh, ink on premium photo paper. And it's stitched with a sewing machine, just a regular home sewing machine. Uh, and then it is, uh, I just treat the paper just like it was cloth. You know, so it basically, once I get it printed, I just sew it the same way you would sew a piece of cloth. And it, it's nice because it's the paper is crisp and it provides like a different texture than the cloth. So it kind of keeps everything squared up nicely. And, uh, and I like that. Nobody else is doing work like that that I've ever seen. And tell us about your inspiration for the work. Well, it's, uh, it's based on my trip to the uh, surrealist sculptures at Las Posas in San Luis Potosi State in Mexico. And uh, Dick Davis Foundation paid for me to go down there and help with a mural project in another place in San Luis Potosi State. And while I was there, I said to myself, I could go to that wonderful garden I read about years ago. Uh, so I went to Ibiza. And uh, there's an 80-acre site of surrealist sculptures. They're made out of concrete. And some of them are, so are uh, tinted, some of them are painted. These are, are some of the uh, photographs over here, or paintings from that as well, right? Yeah, and that, the one that you're looking at now, that's the entrance to the sculpture park. Mm -hmm. And that building is four, feet, four stories tall. Oh. Mm. So you can see the little tiny people at the uh -huh. bottom. That's how big it is. See the little people sitting around and there's a bush there at the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. So that's how big they are. And you can climb all through them. Because you know in Mexico, they don't worry as much as we do here about guardrails and things like that. <laughs> but, silly, silly.
usually things like safety uh, uh, precautions. So. Yeah, yeah, you kind of throw caution to the wind if you want to be in Mexico. And, uh, well, you've got to take some responsibility for yourself. Exactly. Right? They're not, you know, they don't sue each other. They're like, you might have a street brawl. It's like if there's a car accident, everybody just gets out of the car and beats it out. And that's it. <laughs> <laughs> And so this wall over here on that, the That's the capital of San Luis Potosí of these four uh, photos are. The one on the left is the um, Plaza Principal, so that's like the main cathedral in the historic area of the capital. And they have the whole uh, area, uh, there's no traffic. You know, it's like a pedestrian area. Mm -hmm. they, have, they have that in, in the... Other places I've been in Mexico too, in Guadalajara, they have a historic district like that downtown. Looks like the jacaranda trees were in bloom when you were there yeah, too. Yeah, I was there in the spring. It was wonderful. And uh, so this is a historic theater. There are five main cathedrals downtown. And I think that's not even including the one at the top. That's a uh, um, Guadalupe Cathedral, and there's this long promenade that uh, everybody goes and walks down on Sunday and then it ends up at the uh, Cathedral of Our Lady of Guadalupe. And then this, this one was, is this, uh, you know, there's little gargoyles everywhere. There's like different architectural details. The, uh, the one at the top I saw and I asked Marissa, who's the uh, Mexican artist that I was working with there, you know, I said, hey, what is that? And she said, it's uh, it's in the chimera, a chimera. It's like a kind of, uh, when I came home, I had to look it up because it's actually, I think, English. A chimera is uh, this fantastical beast that has the yeah. face of a snake or a fish. I think it has like the head of an eagle, the neck is the snake, but it has wings and it has feet like a lion. Hmm. <laughs> Mythical for but, sure. <laughs> but also, the, the little light post that's in front of her that has those two creatures on it, those are everywhere in the stage. I mean, not just in the capital, but in everywhere I went. I saw that same style, and at first I thought they were flying fish, but I think they hmm. might be dragons. Hmm. So my husband named this Mother of Dragons, mm -hmm. and uh, so that's what we call it in English. But, uh, you know, stuff like that's everywhere, everywhere. It's just, just you just walk down the street and you can just look at everything. And the cathedrals, they have like the saints on the roofs, you know, and so you look up and there's the saints all together. <laughs> well, that was when we were in Europe, the same thing, where yeah. they had the saints' heads all around the tops right. of the cathedrals. Yeah, and it's a very, uh, it's a colonial area, so it's very European, San Luis Potosí. Mm -hmm. And it still is, Dick was saying, it's still a very rich state of Mexico. Oh, is it? Yeah. Because yeah. that was a big silver mining area originally, yeah. and so that they, they were quite uh, quite rich in that and area. And still, the, the, the upper class there is very rich. Mm -hmm. I was talking to, who was I talking to, Yvonne, about how in Mexico there still is a, a kind of racism with uh, the darker your skin. Mm -hmm. The poorer you are, the lighter, the people with all the money are light skinned. Mm -hmm. Light skinned, yeah. yeah. In Central America, too, I find that is true. Mm -hmm. So they've got a lot of uh, oh, racial disparity then between yeah, the, yeah. the Native Americans and uh, the Spanish and the who Spanish came. people with Spanish blood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. So um, this wall back here, you've got some mosaics on it. You were talking about them earlier. Uh, uh, tell me a little bit about this project that you went to participate in in La Ciudad de Maíz. Del Maíz. Del Maíz. Ciudad del Maíz. It's on the part, uh, San Luis Potosi State is divided into the uh, Altiplano, which is like a high desert plateau. Mm -hmm. That's about, I think, two thirds of the state is like that. And then it drops down the mountains to the coast and starts the cloud forest that continues like through Veracruz and all the way down the east coast of Mexico. 
and to Guatemala. Mm -hmm. Here to Japan and down to Central America. So this is like the very northernmost part of that quad forest. And uh, it's, they call it La Huasteca. So that's the other, the other culture. And it's totally separate cultures, the Altiplano and the La Huasteca. Mm -hmm. So La Huasteca, they have their own music. This is Guapalo music. And a uh, whole uh, separate culture. So the Ciudad del Maiz is in the Altiplano. And that's where I was for the first week to do the mural project. And Marissa Martinez, who's a Mexican uh, woman artist, was doing a mural project sponsored by Dick Davis Foundation at the middle school in Ciudad del Maiz. Uh, and so the, the devil, uh, the design of the devil is from a part of that mural. And it's, a, it's kind of emblematic of the, uh, the city because he has the ears of corn. Mm -hmm. And I know in the uh, Holy Week pageants they have there, that's one thing they have on the masks. They have the mask of the devil, devil. with the ears of corn. And he literally has his ears of corn. <laughs> corn. And he has um, desert flowers on his head that's the emblem of the city. It's uh -huh. a type of a white flower that blooms there. And then at, uh, during Holy Week, you were there during Holy Week. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we right. were there. We were in San Luis Potosi uh -huh. for Holy Week, and they were all the um, the performers out in the square. They uh -huh. a lot of them had the devil uh, devil mask devil mask that they were working with, and uh -huh. uh, yeah, and all of those cathedrals around that main old town area yeah, was pretty it incredible. Yeah. But were, were you there? Did they burn uh, an effigy of the devil when you were there? Did I didn't there? see that. They yeah. might have, but uh, we didn't go yeah. down to the main yeah. square every night. Yeah. And so there was different things happening every day uh -huh. of the week. Well, I know it's in that Del at least. They do that. They have. It's like our Burning Man here. Mm -hmm. you know, the Burning Man Festival. Yeah. They uh, have a huge effigy of the devil, and uh, and they burn him, and then they shoot off fireworks, and mm -hmm. you know. It, it, signifies that uh, they're standing up evil. Yeah. You know, they're burning, they're burning the evil up. Yeah. But the, the devil is like a very playful figure. Mm -hmm. He's not like scary. You right. Know? He's like, uh, you know, he's a, he's a funny guy. In Michel Kahn, there's a lot of sculptures of the devil that are, that are amusing. Right? There's a town of Obichu in, in Michel Kahn. And uh, they make these characteristic little devil sculptures, and it's like the devil driving a school bus. There is, there is like things. the the uh, tongue-in-cheek ones of Santa Claus doing all these things that you wouldn't expect Santa Claus exactly. to be doing. Exactly, but they have that for Santa me. Claus on a surfboard, and yeah. <laughs> well, the top was a, the the design is from a uh, historic mural that I saw, uh, also from the fifties. Uh, so that's like the same era as the surrealist sculpture type. Mm -hmm. uh, the guy who uh, built these, he commissioned them. Uh, he was a rich hacienda owner. And uh, he commissioned these mosaics that uh, tell the whole story of his, his hacienda. Mm -hmm. his uh, and they, they were built in the 50s. They're about the size of two billboards. Hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. he was killed in a private plane crash shortly after he built these uh, these mosaic. Uh, uh, it's just a wall. It's a standing wall, you know. It's like billboard size. Yeah. And uh, he died. Uh, and then the hacienda is in ruins, so it's like there are, the whole town is. There's a little sign that says Tepeyac is the name of the town, which is the same as the. Uh, Guadalupe's Hill in Mexico City is Tepeyac. Mm -hmm. And so you drive down the highway, and this is La Tepeyac. And then you come in, and it's like total ruins. But the mosaics are standing, and the mosaics survive beautifully. But the rest of it is uh, just abandoned. Yeah. It reminded me a lot of uh, like our ghost towns in California, like Bodie, this is State of Park. Mm -hmm. so Where they sort of maintained it in that. Uh, yeah. Uh, arrested, arrested decay. Arrested decay, yeah. yeah. And, and they want to do that with uh, Tepeyac. Mm -hmm. What they want to do is uh, restore the murals 
and uh, fix it up so that it is sort of a um, destination, you know, and mm -hmm. then uh, it's owned by a foundation, and so they'd like to uh, be able to use it to raise money to do social projects, you know. Yeah, and when so, you were talking about um, thinking it would be really nice to be able to go down and do a project related to that restoration exactly. work. Exactly, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, restoring the murals. Uh, both the mosaic murals and their painted murals in uh, Ciudad del Maiz that also need to be restored. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm, I'm really interested in uh, doing a project like that. Would love to. Yeah, I'll yeah. find out what's going to happen. So tell me about a few more of these things here. You've got uh -huh. some really cool dolls yeah. here. The large doll there was made by the grandmother of one of the boys that worked on the mural project with us at the middle school, so he was about 12. There were two two or three little boys that came every day and worked Ooh, for us fun. after school. And then sometimes there would be a whole group of kids would come. Uh -huh. um, so in the slideshow, I have some pictures of that. But uh, these, these two or three little boys were there every day. And uh, the, the, one of them, his grandmother made this doll for me. Mm -hmm. So she's, she's very sweet. The, um, the small doll, VNA, the vice mayor at Ciudad de Maiz gave me that one. It's more of a tourist doll that uh, you see these little dolls all around Mexico, but it's very special because she gave it to me. And she also gave me this uh, candle of Guadalupe that's in front, which is kind of tiff. She might straighten, can you straighten that up? Or wait, can you reach it? Yeah, just straighten it up. It's not lit. But uh, yeah, we talked about Guadalupe and, you know. She's people, a patron people. for uh, quite a few of the churches, isn't she? I know oh, the yeah, one she's church everywhere. is definitely. She's uh, everywhere. Because uh, even when I was in uh, San Miguel de Allende, mm -hmm. they were having a, a pilgrimage mm -hmm. uh, in honor of Guadalupe. Mm -hmm. And um, so yeah. I got the impression that she was patron saint to she quite is. a lot of the churches. They call her uh, the goddess of the Americas, uh, patrons, because they've kind of, the, the native religion has combined with the Catholic religion, and so she sort of has taken the role of the mother goddess, mm. mm -hmm. and there's the whole story behind her. Uh, so uh, she and I really uh, talked a lot about Guadalupe. There's a joke in Mexico about if you get on the bus and there's no image of the Virgin of Guadalupe in the front of it, get off the bus. The bus. <laughs> it's not going to be a safe bus. It's not <laughs> going to be a good situation because, you know, she's always there. But uh, anyway, that little, she gave me that little candle because she said she's had a since she was a child. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, I have my, my uh, medal, my Guadalupe medal that I bought in Chepique that I always wear. So that's, that's the Guadalupe. And then, so I have these two uh, still lights that I did with my dolls. The other uh, two dolls back there are from my collection. I have a whole collection of dolls. But uh, I never have, have done still life, um, and, you know, since I got out of art school. I was never interested in still life. But uh, I read uh, recently of something uh, that said, uh, if you're going to be still like, you need to do things that are important to you. Mm -hmm. you know, that have some like meaning. Yeah. Yeah, then it becomes something, doesn't it? Otherwise, it's just a pile of fruit. And yeah, you know, but to me, the, the one that you're looking at now, what's uh, meaningful about it, there's a lot of things in it, but the, the, when I lived in Mexico when I was 20, I lived in a little town out in the country, and uh, there were very few things to eat. So, like, so everything that's in the still life that's edible are things that we could get uh, while we lived there. And that was it. So Gosh, like this eggs. one up here. There's an eggs down in the corner. That was the only protein was seafood and eggs. Uh huh. I don't have any seafood in the picture. But so you, you weren't getting uh, beef steaks and things like that no, when you were there? No, no. no. Eggs and that was it for protein, except the one time that somebody ran over a pig. And, and then the next day, they were on the loudspeaker. You know, in the little towns that they used to have, I'm from 
we still do have a loudspeaker in the, in the uh -huh. morning. Yeah. They play music over it, and right. then they announce what's happening in the town that day. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. and uh, so the next day it was like, Carne de Puerto! That's the only time there was fresh meat. Right. The other meat we used to get, though, is um, dried chorizo sausages that were wrapped up like little dry salamis. Mm. And they came in a string. <laughs> That's why I have that dry salami over there. Oh, okay. And that to lunch. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. With a nice loaf of bread. Yeah. And there's one more painting up here that we haven't talked about. Oh, this folklorico. Of the folklorico. Yeah. Let's see if I can get a little closer to it here. Uh -huh. Without uh -huh. having a big... Oh, we've got reflections from windows in here. Uh, yeah. Oh, there we go. Okay, now I can see it. Yeah. As, uh, after I uh, came back from the meat letter and went to the sculpture garden, I was able to uh, fly over to... Puerto Vallarta, and I saw my friend who was our house girl when I was 20 in a little town there. And so I hadn't seen her for 35 years. And it was a very cheerful reunion, and I got to spend uh, two days with her. And we went down uh, in Puerto Vallarta, we went down to the beach, and there you know, were dancers including these uh, folkloric dancers that put on a little show in the nighttime there. So that was very fun, and um, that a, is a different media from the rest of the show. It's water-soluble graphite mm -hmm. and with watercolor. So the color is watercolor, but it's uh, the... Go uh, with that water-soluble. Yeah, the black yeah. and white is, uh, is, looks like a wash, but it's actually... Um, the pencil actually dissolves into the water to make the wash. Yeah, I've got some of those and I haven't really played with them that much. I'm going to have to play with it a bit more. Yeah. That really come out nicely. That's what I used to use uh, for my uh, uh, figure drawings. When I first started drawing here at Frank Dead Center, uh, which was the first thing I ever did here, I lived right at the street. I used to come to the figure group and uh, that was the medium that I worked in for years in that group, uh, water soluble pencils. And I've taught, when I've taught life drawing, that's what I, how I teach, too. Mm -hmm. It's a really good gateway to painting from drawing, you know? Because then you can just take a brush in and move things around. Yeah, and it, it, you learn to think about shape and form instead of line mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and contour, you know? So like drawing, when people do contour drawing, you draw the edge, and in order to paint, you have to be able to see the form. Right. Not the edge. <laughs> I know, I get frustrated sometimes when I'm drawing because I just want to be able to take a brush and create that, that shaded area uh -huh. in one or two strokes instead of uh -huh. having to... But did, didn't you find when you were first, I don't know, I was into drawing before I learned to paint. Mm -hmm. and, and the transition the other way is really difficult. And then teaching people, I find that too. Yeah. That people get stuck on that contour, mm -hmm. you know? And it's difficult, it was difficult for me to make that transition to painting. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, to see the Both difference. Both ways, it's, it's difficult, I'm sure. Okay. Yeah. Well, Susan, okay. this has been wonderful. Well, good. I'm going to just do a little quick looky around the room here just yeah. to sort of give a little around the way, make everybody seasick while I turn this. <laughs> Let me I never just know say. how fast or slow to, to do this, and I can always cut all of this out. Uh -huh. Well, let me just say that it was a dream come true for me to make this trip. I didn't think that I would get to go to Mexico again in my life. And uh, so it was just one of those things that just came, you know, if you believe in the universe or whatever you believe, it was just something that came to me and it was a wonderful gift. Yeah, that's, that's wonderful. Yeah, Dick Davis has been such a great patron here at the Frank Butt Center. Um, he's, he's given us grants for a number of artists to go 
and do cultural exchanges in Mexico. And I'm so glad you were able to be one of them. And this has been just really great. And then he's brought some of the Mexican artists up here as well to do exchanges the other direction. Yeah, so. I'd love to be able to get Marissa up here to do a project somewhere. Yeah. I would be very happy to help to sort of take that. Yeah, so anyway, oh, I'm nice. going to turn this off. All right.